Hey there, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey, and in this video we've got a really quick Q&A on uh, a couple a question that's come in on the 2-3 press four check. So let's go ahead, we'll jump straight to it, we'll pull up the rink here. Um, I'm running it out of this side of the rink um, because this is the same side that we did the last time I did the 2-3 press um, instructional video. So I'll link to that in the description. I'm not going to go through exactly how the 2-3 press works in this video. I'm going to talk about specifically um, answering this question. Now the question that came in uh, was like this. Uh, Jeremy, how do you transition from four check to offense when you create a turnover in the 2-3 press? It seems tough to run a cycle because you will draw players out of good defensive position. So I think that's a great question and uh, that's what we're gonna answer in this video. Now to be perfectly honest with you, the 2-3 press is actually one of the easiest um, four checks to transition into really solid offensive positioning um, once, you get the once you get the turnover. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna show you what we've got here. Um, if you watch the original video, no 2-3 press, we've got two guys that go in hard. Um, and they come in kind of in a spread. So the first man comes in, makes that hit, um, or attempts to make that hit. Second man's coming to, you know, we kind of draw him. I usually like to say he comes in kind of a, towards the middle. Um, and if it looks like there's gonna be a D to D pass, he's ready to jump down and, uh, and make the hit. The whole purpose of the two, three press, it's hard hitting, it's intimidating, and uh, it's a great way to kick off the game if you wanna set the other team on their heels a little bit, um, you know, moving forward for the rest of the game. So, um, you know, if it looks like this guy, this defenseman has dropped down and is possibly going to be a D to D pass option, then F2 will come here. Uh, but F2 is basically, he's floating in, watching and waiting. And, you know, depending on what F1 does and whether he gets there in time and makes that hit, if F1 gets there in time and makes the hit, then F2 is going to be swinging in this way to pick up the loose puck after it bounces loose. If, uh, if that doesn't happen, then F2 is kind of hanging out. It's, it's, it's a read and react on F2's position. Uh, and then we've got our two defensemen back, and then our F3 is in the middle. And our, our two defensemen are watching and waiting. The strong side defenseman is, is anticipating a possible pinch. So if this guy tries a strong side breakout, then this defenseman is dropping down, making that hit. F3 is sliding across, second defenseman sliding across, and F2 will be peeling back in a slightly defensive position, slightly defensive mindset there. So that's kind of how the, the basic 2-3 press works. Um, how you transition this to offense is gonna depend on where the transition occurs. So let's just say, um, for example, let's go through a few of the different opportunities, okay? So let's say F1 does a great job, gets in there full speed, makes the hit, this guy's taken out of the play, and now the puck you know, just barely squirts loose somewhere down below the goal line. That's where we said F2 is coming in, watching and waiting, seeing if it looks like F1's going to get it, then yeah, he's going to provide strong side support and uh, anticipate a possible turnover. So in that case, F2 comes in, picks up the puck. As soon as F3 sees that there's been a turnover, he's dropping into the high slot, and now you're in, you know, you're in your, your attack triangle. This is great positioning to be able to, you know, he can do anything from there. Um, if it sucks the centerman in, then sometimes that leaves some open space in the slot. For that F3, you know, a, a you know a nice pass out to the slot for a one-time shot, which is fine. Um, if not, then you're open to a cycle. And remember, the cycle can go either way. So the cycle, you can go a cycle where you you're skating down low with it and cycling it back up, or you can initiate the cycle where you're skating up and then cycling it back down. So assuming you know maybe you could go for a low cycle here. F2 starts walking, okay, draws a man in. And then, uh, you know, from there, he either, you know, he can read and react. If this guy's there, then he might not have room to skate. If that guy's not there, he might walk out the other side. There's options there. Um, but either way, we're in position for a cycle, a low cycle, if we need to, where, you know, he can just bounce it back off the boards. F1's in position, and then F2 pulls around, fills that spot on the back door, and now F1 can either hit F3, or, you know, if he wants to, he can continue the cycle, and F3 can slide in and you know be the next receiver on the pass and if that happens then f2 peels out to the slot f1 fills the lane or fills the space on the back door and that's how you initiate your cycle um, if you want to go the opposite direction with it so let's just back everybody up to kind of their original spots so let's just say so f1 made, came in made the hit okay f2 picks it up and you know like i said we have textbook version but then, you know, in a game, you're always going to be reading and reacting based on where the other team goes, what exactly happens. So if for some reason F2 starts walking out towards F1, then obviously F1's not going to stand there. He's going to peel out, 
and now, sorry, after I, I forgot to draw F3, F3 has slotted down into the slot. If, two, if F2 comes start walking this way, now F1 peels through, drives through the lane. Now he's an option for like that kind of that give and go out of the corner. And uh, as F1's peeling out in the high slot, now F3 can drive down to the back door. And that's, I mean, if you're talking about cycling, this is textbook definition of cycling. This is exactly what, what we're looking for in a cycle. In a cycle, you basically, you want to have one guy with a puck, another guy filling a lane in the high slot, another guy, uh, you know, filling a lane on the back door. Now, they're not always in those exact positions because they're cycling through, they're rotating, but, you know, you've got a front side option, back side option, and that's how it works. So that's how you would initiate the cycle if you cause the turnover on the initial attack. Let's back everybody up to where we were before. <clears throat> let's go with the next scenario now. Okay, so let's say that F1 does a great job. He gets in there, but he's not quite quick enough. And uh, let's say that this guy tries to force a pass up the boards. Okay, so they went for the strong side breakout. Now, as you know, as soon as it looks like this guy is even thinking about moving the puck up ice, this defenseman's licking his chops, right? Because he knows he's about to step in into, you know, it's I call it a kill zone, you know, because we've set up the play where this guy's going to have nowhere to go. If this guy reads it right and times it right, he'll be arriving at the man at the same time as the puck and be able to, you know, to make the hit there. Okay? So if that happens, then we've got F3 sliding over and this defenseman sliding over and this guy peeling back, you know, a slightly defensive position, right? Just in case. Um, now, usually when this happens, obviously the puck has momentum, it's going forward, and usually as this hit is made, then the puck squirts loose, and F3 is often able to pick that up, keeps it in, able to pick it up. As Soon as that happens, what are we doing, okay? F3 is gonna pick it up, walk right through the middle. I mean, that's where your open ice is, okay? Step right into the high slot, F2 is driving back down to the back door, and F1 is coming out for a you know, possible possible front side option. From here, I'm not looking to cycle. I'm looking for a shot or a backdoor pass. Those are my two options from there. So I wouldn't be too concerned. If you're if you're executing it properly enough where that F3 is the one picking it up, he'll be able to walk into the high slot and most of the time take a good shot on net or be looking for a backdoor pass to that F2 man. Okay, so that's another possible, possible scenario. Now, if uh, let's go through a third option. And this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. If you're going to fail on the 2-3 press, this is usually where it's going to happen. Is So let's say F1 goes in, um, makes the hit, but then, you know, however however it happens, this guy is able to get a, uh, a middle breakout. So this would be our centerman here, the other team's centerman. So if he's able to make a middle breakout pass, then this is what happens. This guy starts walking up the middle. That's where F3, and this is kind of where it's... It's a risky play, but it's okay because we've got two guys back, the two defensemen back, plus the weak side winger um, peeling back. So we just go up and we take a stab at him. We make the stand. And again, it's the same thing. F3 is looking, and if it even looks like that guy's going to attempt a middle breakout, then he's already starting to lick his chops. He's creeping in a little bit, and then he's trying to time it so that as the centerman receives the pass, he's stepping up and making the hit. At the same time, it's a it's a more difficult play to make because there's it's it's not along the boards. There's more you know if this guy if he times it wrong or if he takes a you know an improper angle or whatever, this guy can sidestep that and then you know you do run the risk of having this guy walk out clean with it. Um, you know if he gets past that F3, but if he does, it should be no problem because we should have two defensemen backing up and a winger coming back into a, you know doing a back checking position. Um, so but. Let's just assume that our F3 reads it properly. Okay. Let's just get everybody back in position here. So let's say our F3 reads it properly. Boom, makes the hit. Puck kind of squirts loose. Now you've got a couple possibilities. Usually what's going to happen is one of the defensemen, and usually it's going to be the strong side defenseman, will be able to read that, slide in, pick it up. And now he's in a great position because this is almost like a natural pick that's happened. So he's in a great position. They could just slide through. You know, as soon as that window, that little window opens up between coverages, he lets the shot go through. And again, once this hit's made, this guy's funneling back to the front of the net. Um, you know, you should have, in theory, you should be able to have two guys in really good positions for rebounds, um, no matter which way you shake it. So if the turnover, I guess the, the general rule or the general assumption, if the turnover happens down low, then you're already in great position for a cycle. If the turnover happens up top, 
you don't really need to worry about the cycle because you're almost in perfect shooting position anyways. So that's what your main objective would be if the turnover happens, you know, um, from your pinching or from your stepping up on the set, you know, with, with the F3 stepping up. So that's kind of what we're looking to do. Works really, really well. It probably will take some practice. Like I said, the biggest thing that you're going to need to work on, especially if you've got a younger team, is just getting that F3 in the habit of stepping up if there's a middle breakout. Because smart teams will try that middle breakout on you. And uh, if your F3 reads it and, and can time it properly, he'll nullify that, no problem. And uh, you know, you'll be able to really hem the other team into their zone. The only downfall of the 2-3 press really is it's so high intensity that um, you get more tired doing it. So you're not, unless your team's in phenomenal shape, uh, you're probably not going to be able to run the 2-3 press for an entire game. But I say, you know, use it in five minute spurts, you know, have your first, you know, your first three shifts or whatever, use a five, use, use a two, three press, um, you know, and then move into something that's a little bit more maintainable. But, uh, you know, it sets that tone early in the game, gets the other team on their heels a little bit, looking over their shoulder, anxious about the possibility of being hit. And, uh, you know, it can really set a great offensive tone for the, you know, for the rest of the game. So use that. Hopefully that helps you. And um, that's how you generate offense off transition on the 2-3 press. Now, if these videos are useful for you, make sure you check out our website at weisstechhockey.com slash blog. We've got tons of other stuff. We've got drills, coaches, training course, lots of stuff that will help you improve your game. And uh, also, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you, uh, you, know, you like it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a question in the comments box. But uh, we appreciate it.